Hi guys, welcome to Studio Light Life. In today's video, I'm going to show you Amber's process for painting a lion in acrylics. So Amber starts most of her paintings with a line drawing and then does a thin wash just to get rid of that white canvas. Then she starts with the eyes, first by blocking using just black acrylics, the basic shapes of the eyes, and then working over the top by blocking in different colours. For this stage, she's using yellow ochre and some orange. This part of the drawing, or this part of the painting process rather, is just the initial blocking stage. So she's not paying too much attention to details, just thinking more about the basic shapes and the basic structures of those eyes. She repeats the process for the left and the right eye. Starting with the black wash, and then working over the top with the colours. For this one, because it's a little bit darker, she started with a little bit of raw umber paint and then added the yellow ochre over the top. Around the eyes she had some blue paint to give the impression of the skin around the eyes rather than just painting them a solid black colour. Once that section's dry, she'll then work over the top of it and refine the eye a little bit more using some raw umber, yellow ochre and some orange paint. She repeats this process just building up the eyes until she's happy with the finished look. This isn't where it will stop, she will add lots more detail than this, but this is just a level she's happy with to give the painting a starting point and for something for her to focus on. So as you can see here we've actually skipped ahead quite a lot because Amber's actually working on a specific video for how to paint lion eyes which will be up on our Patreon channel. I will drop a link down to the Patreon in the description below. That video won't be up for a couple of months but it's going to be really good. Here you can see that Amber is building up those first strokes just using a number eight round brush. And again, she's using combinations of raw umber, burnt umber, yellow ochre, white, and raw sienna, with the occasional bit of buff titanium. She just repeats this process, starting with the darker colors first, and then building the lighter layers over the top for this blocking stage. Again, the vast majority of this painting, or the vast majority of this layer at least, was done with this number 8 round brush. For the details around the muzzle, again it was built up just with that raw umber paint, yellow ochre, buff titanium and little bits of burnt umber for these orangey reddier glows, and then worked over the top with a small detail brush and some very very watered down white mixed with a slight bit of buff titanium just to knock back some of those white colours. Amber's really good with the way that she paints the fur because she makes sure to leave plenty of gaps between each layer to show those strands of fur showing underneath. This gives that impression of 3D realistic fur that I try to achieve in my paintings and Amber achieves in hers. Once she's got her initial layers down, she will use a detailed brush to refine the fur even more, adding in those tiny, tiny strokes. The rest of the lion pretty much builds up in the same way. This reference photo was from Emmanuel Keller, a fantastic wildlife photographer who myself and Amber have used on multiple occasions. You can find a lot of his work on wildlife reference photos. Thank you. 
For the nose, again, she starts with the black wash and then builds up the colours going from dark to light. I'm actually putting together a small video tutorial about painting animal noses. The nose that I'm specifically going to be painting is a bear, but I'm going to teach you the principles of painting a nose, and you can apply those principles to any animal nose that you like. That video will be up in a few months' time also. The ears are painted in very much the same way as the rest of the body, but Amber is making sure to pay very close attention to the direction of the fur strokes. She's using a small, short sword liner here just to block in those longer strands of fur and then uses a filbert brush and very thin watered down paint to glaze colours over those lighter strands of fur. She does this glazing process quite a lot throughout her painting to add different layers, different shadows, different highlights and different colours to the fur that she's already laid down underneath. For the muzzle she starts by adding in her colours and then works over the top with the lighter strands of fur again in the same way that she paints the rest of the body. But for this stage, she's using a lot of buff titanium and Payne's grey and white mixed together to create a very, very light pale grey colour. When she moves onto the longer strands of fur, for this, you're thinking more about the big clumps rather than short individual strands. You want the strands of fur to blend together, which is why she uses the big number 8 brush. She isn't focusing as much on individual strands here, clumping and clustering them together to give the impression of fur rather than painting in all of that detail. Because if you start doing it with these longer strands, the fur tends to look a little bit wiry rather than that soft flowing mane that you want and expect a lion to have. Once that's done and dry, she'll build up and work more on the muzzle and add in her final touches of the whiskers using a sword liner brush and white paint. The whiskers are usually the only area of the painting that is done in pure white. And a little tip, not all of the whiskers on wildlife is pure white. It is a good idea to look around and have a look at what other colours those whiskers might be. Sometimes Amber makes mistakes in whiskers and just washes them away with the sponges, which is what you saw there. But it's a good idea to maybe add a few touches of black whiskers to the fur as well, or to the lion as well, and that just really finishes it off. So here you can see the finished painting, it's incredible and one of my favourite paintings that Amber's done. I hope you enjoyed the video and as always, thank you so much for watching. For more wildlife art tips, please head on over to studiowildlife.com.